Hello, my name's Dave Hearns and I'm fighting dishonest employees and have done so for 21 years. My experience is dealing with dishonest employees within the workplace and that's all element of dishonesty, whether that be criminal or whether that be civil. And the short video webinar is to give you an insight into my perception of how COVID is going to affect elements of dishonest employees within the workplace because the workplace has changed, people's rationalization has changed and the motivations have changed. Now, in going into businesses for 21 years and looking at how employees have been dishonest both on the criminal and the civil side, there are consistent themes that run through. And as an employee, the opportunity is there and those employees will find those opportunities to be dishonest. But as an employer, you have got to be mature, realistic and responsible in understanding that there is a risk to you from dishonest employees within the workplace. Now, I just want to give you a quick snapshot into um, the current position of dishonesty within the workplace. A lot of people will say we don't have a, a dishonest employees in the workplace and we haven't got a problem. The thing is we have to be realistic that there is a problem and you will have, you have had or you currently do have dishonest employees within the workplace. And figures just recently reported by NatWest Bank at the end of December last year show that the UK currently business fraud is hit at 190 million per year of which they anticipate 40% is committed by employees. Now, I often present saying that the amount of dishonesty committed by employees is far, far less than we think and we know because these figures are only based on those that are caught. And this here is fraud that the bank are talking about here on these figures, not other elements of dishonesty. And they're looking at criminal fraud here. So they believe 40% is committed by employees. Personally, I think it's a lot higher. And that equates to around about £88 million per year, which is a phenomenal amount of money. And that staff with five years service are more likely to commit most of that fraud. And again, this here, the bank is just talking about fraud. But I can tell you from all of the research I have done that the SME sector is absolutely by far the most vulnerable sector that there is. Less than one in five have conducted a fraud risk assessment. Now these figures, we just need to put them into reality of what that impact that has on each individual business and that types of dishonesty. We will always automatically think of things like fraud, asset misappropriation, accountancy fraud, ghost workers, things of that nature. But we've got other elements of fraud as well that are within the business that may well be civilly orientated and theft that is civilly orientated. So that is theft of data, people stealing data and leaving the business and going elsewhere or starting up on their own. That is theft of product, theft of raw materials, all sorts of things that can be stolen. You then have issues of false absenteeism, long-term uh, physical or mental debilitation, where somebody is skiving off work. The impact that this is having on the business with the element of dishonest employees in the workplace, and that's before we start looking at things like drugs in the workplace, that's selling drugs, manufacturing drugs, cultivating drugs, all of which I have seen over those year, over those 21 years. Now, we would all like to know the question of why employees are dishonest. What takes a normal law-abiding citizen to be dishonest? Now, this here is called the fraud triangle. It was devised by an eminent criminologist and sociologist named Donald Cressy, and his findings were based purely on fraud. And I have turned the fraud triangle into a theft and fraud triangle, and in fact, for anything that equates to employee dishonesty. And I think it's a great, great slide that shows how and why employees can become dishonest. It's the fact that they have the opportunity to be dishonest around their normal working day, around their normal working actions. They identify that opportunity. They may have had to done, do a, have done a little bit of work to identify that opportunity, but generally that opportunity presents itself. What's the rationale? 
What's the rationalization in their mind? A lot of the time it is the fact that they feel they are not paid enough, that they're underpaid, that they're not valued enough, they've been overlooked for promotion, the business makes enough money as it is and they don't get enough of percentage proportion from that. It may be the fact that the boss drives a bigger car and he, she doesn't have to work the night shift. They will rationalize in their own mind here how and why they should become and be dishonest of which I can tell you virtually every employee that is dishonest won't actually think that they are a criminal. They don't think like, as if they are like the stereotypical criminal that will break into your car, burgle your house, sell drugs. And in the other corner, the motivation is always for financial remuneration. In 21 years, I have yet to see an employee being dishonest for charitable and philanthropic reasons. It's always for that motivation. And they make a rational choice. They make a rational choice to cut, take this course of conduct. And they do this routinely around their normal daily working life. So how and where does COVID change this? And I think there's going to be many, many, many years of discussions. There's going to be many years of research to see how COVID has impacted on dishonesty within the workplace. Now, my view is I've been monitoring COVID and the dishonesty within the workplace. I haven't completely finalized my views and my decisions, but I've clearly identified certain things that as a business you need to be aware of because those opportunities will probably have become much more available. The rationalization for the individual may well have massively changed, but the motivation I still think will be for that financial remuneration. The workplace as we look at it now, it has changed. We have less people working within the workspace. We have more people working remotely at home, working off-site whether we're leapfrogging and people coming in and out on certain days, but we don't have the volume of people within the workplace that we had before. And we've got people now that are almost, in effect, doubling up on roles as well. So while somebody's not within the workplace and a role within there can't be done, somebody else may well be doubling up on there. And that doesn't matter whether that's with a, the, the white collar level, whether that's at middle management and support, or whether it be, you know, metaphorically on the factory floor. Those opportunities will change. Control measures that you will have put in place to prevent dishonesty, not only from the external criminal, but by the employee, those control measures might not actually be as effective now as they were pre-pandemic. Because those control measures will probably be centered for a business model and a business structure that actually is quite significantly changed. You will not have what we call natural surveillance within the workplace. There will be less staff, there will be less people, less colleagues, less managers. So there will be less eyes on, less footfall on the ground. You will also have what we call less territoriality. And this is an ownership that an individual or persons or group of people or sector have for where they are. So if you've got a group of really good employees that are really conscientious about what happens within their area, if they're not there, that territoriality has actually broken down and you haven't got the strength that you did have in there before. Because again, that's coupled alongside the lack of employees and footfall uh, uh, that is on the ground there. So those opportunities will open up just purely from a situational perspective there let alone that people are working remotely with potentially different software structures in place with less supervision from staff as well probably new employees being brought into the business as well where you don't actually know those employees as well as you would normally by being involved with them so much closer so what i'm trying to say is those opportunities may well Become more significantly and much more availability than they did pre-pandemic. Don't get me wrong, an employee that is currently or has been will have identified those opportunities anyway and that's what dishonest employees do. They identify the opportunities. So into the next point and the next point of the, the triangle is we have the rationalization and I mentioned briefly some of the, the reasons why somebody might you know, their rationale might be to be dishonest. But now rationale might change. 
just a couple of simple things may well be the fact that a spouse, a partner, a family member has lost their job, finances are difficult now, and money is required. So we're moving into the motivation being financial, but the rationalization might be actually that fact that we haven't got the available funds, income, the money's coming into the household as we had before. I need to do something about this. How can I do it? I've identified how I can on elements of dishonesty. Rationale might change as well because you've got individuals that are working from home or remote working and other people are feeling um, hardship against them because they are having to go in the workplace. That might feel that they feel disgruntled because they're being made to go into the workplace and they think somebody has a better deal working from home because they're not doing the commute, they're able to have their lunch at home and they feel that they have got the hardship of having to go to the workplace. But again, you will also have individuals that will feel, despite you know, sort of measures that businesses have put in place to protect their empl employees, that they are much more vulnerable within the workplace. And therefore then, does their employee actually care about them? Is that their perception that they don't think that? I've got an employee here, I've got a role here where I have to come into work and somebody else doesn't. Is that going to affect their, affect their rationale that they might find that their loyalty towards the business is less than it was before? And will that change their rationale for becoming and being dishonest? Then we come to the third point of the triangle. And again, it is that motivation being financial. I still think it will be financial because you know there are burdens on the households now as I've mentioned with people within the family environment and the dynamics that have lost their jobs or are now on less pay than they were before. You will have people that are not making their commissions and receiving their bonuses. So people will find that money is tight and difficult and that may well force them towards that dishonesty. But also there are other factors that may well impact on that as well. And again, it will be interesting to see the research over the years of how people's mental health has been affected. Are there more people that have got involved with alcoholism and drinking too much? Are there people there that are um, gotten themselves involved with drugs? And gambling is going to be a big issue. It looks as if there is an increase in gambling from pre-pandemic. Now, of course, the increase in gambling increases the need for financial remuneration and if any of you have looked at my uh, Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn feeds you will see that there are a few case studies on there that I've highlighted where gambling as an addiction has led to dishonesty within the workplace. There are a multitude of, of ways that the pandemic is going to affect the workplace and the opportunity for employees to be dishonest and I just did want to just flag up those ones for you it's not a complete definitive it's just a few points at this early stage of looking at the workplace of how the pandemic may affect and I just want to just close by reminding you again of the furrow triangle the triangle of dishonesty opportunity has that employee got the opportunity how have they rationalized their actions and the motivational factors as well? And that's when we're not even, even here looking at taking into account the fact that you are potentially employing people who you've never seen face to face on interviews and you've never seen the genuine documentation and it's scanned documents and things of that nature. So it is a very difficult time for the business, along with you know, sort of all of the other issues that COVID and Brexit are bringing at this time but please as a reminder be responsible be mature and be realistic and please do not think that this won't happen to you because there are so many cases whereby businesses have lost through dishonest employees I am of course always able to be contacted so if I can help then please contact me at www.davekearns.co.uk at www.expert-investigations.co.uk and at dave at davekearns.co.uk and my telephone number 07879 482902.